Hello, my friends. Today we are doing a highly requested deep dive into exactly how to balance the Canon M50 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens on the Crane M3, which is a newly released lightweight gimbal that is just perfect for crop sensor mirrorless cameras. And the Sigma 16 millimeter lens is considered the you know most perfect vlogging lens because it's wide enough, but it also has a very large aperture. So it's a perfect lens for vlogging, but this lens is just a tiny bit too long for things to be comfortable if it's not balanced perfectly. But you can do it. Um, I think there's a few things some people might be missing. So hopefully watching this video, you'll you know realize something you're doing wrong and be able to eventually get that perfect balance by you know following the steps that I'm doing and I will talk about the problems that some of you might have had because a lot of you said you've had issues but hopefully this will clear them up so the crane m3 packs up super small obviously I mean the thing is so tiny this is it all folded up and we're starting from this folded up position because I just want to make sure I'm really going through every single step with you so when you balance a gimbal, you do not turn on the gimbal until it's completely balanced. If a gimbal isn't balanced, it will shake violently and just let you know that it is angry. So we have all three axes locked and the three switches to unlock them are here, one on this side, here, and one on the top. <laughs> I'll probably show you once I have them unlocked. So I'm just gonna unlock everything just kind of open it up this way. So this bar is horizontal and lock it back up. So the lock to lock it back up is right there on the bottom. You'll hear it click. And this one it kind of naturally comes into balancing position once it's open. Okay, so now the gimbal's in the position where it's ready to have the camera mounted on it. Um, you'll want to get familiar with this button you kind of slide this over to the left and that enables you to push the button. So every time you want to push this, you slide it in. This is the mounting plate. This is a super simple mounting system. It's actually really, really nice because uh, with larger gimbals, when you mount a crop sensor mirrorless camera, sometimes you'll have like a two-step mounting situation. That's how it is on the Weeble. There's like a plate and then another plate. So this is just so refreshing to have it be so simple. And this is gonna slide onto here once the camera's mounted. So there's two different ways to do it. You can, that's how it comes off. It's gonna face this way. So you can screw it on first, points toward the battery. Screw it on kind of loosely, open that up. So it's able to accept the plate and then pop it on. And I said loosely because you want to then kind of adjust it just so there is just a tiny sliver of space right over here. So you don't want there to be a huge gap, but just enough wiggle room, literally <laughs> wiggle room, and then tighten up the bottom screw. So now the Canon M50 is mounted on the Crane M3. And by the way, I forgot to mention, this is the Canon M50 Mark II. The Canon M50 original is the exact same camera body, so it doesn't make a bit of difference. Um, I'm just happened to be using the Mark II, which nicely matches <laughs> the Crane M3, I must say. But Okay, so we're gonna think of balancing this in terms of steps rather than talking so much about the verbiage that people use to refer to each axis on the gimbal because I think that's when people get really confused. So there's terms pan, tilt, yaw, Y-A-W, roll, pitch. I made notes, pitch is one of them. And a lot of it comes from aviation, like things airplanes do when an airplane flips, it, that's a roll. So that's why a lot of that has translated into gimbal terminology, but it doesn't really matter. It does matter. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say what each of them are according to Jiyun for this gimbal, but we're gonna think of it in terms of steps. Step one, step two, step three, and what's gonna blow your mind is there's actually a step four. So it's a three axis gimbal, but there's actually four steps to balancing it. One very important thing to remember before you balance any camera on any gimbal is to absolutely have everything, have the camera set up exactly how you're gonna use it. So if you want the screen flipped out, flip it out in advance. If you want filters on, put them on in advance. We'll talk about the filters later. If you're gonna have a mic on top, put that on in advance because that completely affects uh, the balance. Your camera battery needs to be in there. Your SD card should be in there, but I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. I'm gonna show you how to use the Rode mic, but we're gonna mount it later on the side. So I won't get into that yet. 
So the screen is flipped out. That's the most important thing right now. First, and the trickiest one, is going to be tilt front to back. You want to unlock this little guy right here. And that's going to make it fluid. And then in order to make adjustments, you're going to flip up this little lever right there. And that makes it so you can slide the camera back and forth. Pretty much with the Sigma 16, well, OK. Just get it to a comfortable point. There's no reason to nitpick it at this point because you're going to have to adjust it again. So basically, since we're talking about a specific camera setup and lens, I can tell you that you're going to want to make this kind of flush. So I'm feeling it with my thumb, but I'm just putting it right there. Now, what is tricky about the M50 is that with the Sigma 16, because you need to push it so far back, it is going to be obstructed on this arm here. And it's also going to be obstructed. I like to blame it on the viewfinder because I don't think the M50 should have a viewfinder, I, at least for video. It's, I would rather it not have a viewfinder, more like the M6 Mark II. But the M6 Mark II doesn't have a flip out screen. So Canon's still working on making the perfect camera. But basically, to fix this issue, we're going to need to go to step two, which is the tilt up or down. So it's like a second version of tilt. That is controlled with this lever here, right in the front. So you loosen that up. And I will say this is very tricky to adjust. I mean, it's not very tricky. You just got to really kind of use. It doesn't always wiggle fluidly, but it's OK because it's not something you adjust a lot. But you basically want to drop it down. It's, it's tempting to drop it down all the way so the viewfinder clears the back arm, but you actually don't want it to drop down all the way, and I'll show you why. So what you're trying to balance here, let me turn this around, what you're trying to balance here is you're trying to make it so the lens points up and stays up, right? It doesn't want to do that right now. It's still falling forward. So we're going to push this up. Let me show you on this side. Up, that's too far. It's going to take a little back and forth. And right now, I just kind of did the opposite, so now it's dropping this way. So now I need to push it down. Now it's dropping that way. That's not as bad, so I need to push it up. And basically, you want to get it to where it just feels floaty and it's not you know, it's not aggressively falling one way or the other. And these are micro movements. Like sometimes it's not even about moving it. It's about putting just enough pressure on it to just, just tiny, tiny movements, right? So it's, it's feeling a lot more fluid. Now here's the tricky thing. Because the viewfinder hits the back arm when it's balanced properly, it's going to kind of fall back and it's going to hit. But what you're trying to do is get a sense of like, you know, when it falls back and it hits, it's not falling back, you know, so violently that it's like, no, this isn't the right balance. It's kind of like a soft fallback, if that makes sense. And I think it needs to go up just a touch further. OK, so now it's like barely falling back, but it does hit now. You push past that. If it's hitting a lot, just push past that. Actually, first of all, tighten this back up. That's your second balance point. Tighten that back up. And what's tricky is that, like I said, we're going to have to go back to that first step to really get the best balance because, as you can see, it's falling forward again. So unlock this again, and you're going to pull it even further back this time. So it's not flush. It's literally almost all the way back, not all the way back. And you know that it's balanced correctly when it's not doing either. It's not falling forward and it's not falling back. Tighten that up and then go back to here. And actually, because it's not hitting right now, I know that it's too far down. And you can also tell it's too far down because that's falling forward. So it's kind of like this little dance of going back and forth between the two to where it's like soft and fluid, but you do want it to hit that back bar. Now, it's hitting the back bar. 
but you are able to just pop it through. So hopefully you can see that that is nicely balanced in that direction. It's not falling either way. And here, when it falls, it's just a little bit more gentle. Okay, the next step is super easy. It is the roll. So consider this step three, which is just the left to right. That you just pop this lever over. I'm sorry, wait, you unlock. There is no way to get this shot, but the button to unlock is underneath. Pretty easy to find, whoa. Okay, so you unlock that, <laughs> everything falls apart. But this one is super simple, and this is definitely one where you need your screen flipped out because that's gonna make a huge difference. But basically, you just shoot it over either way until, it, uh, until it's got a comfortable left-right, and we will be able to fine-tune this at the end when I turn on the gimbal. You can even relock, relock the top one in order to work side to side. So you can kind of really focus on just that. So you can see it's got a pretty good side to side swing. And what's nice about this gimbal that's not on all gimbals is the little lineup marker. So you can see exactly where it should be lined up. Okay, so that one's good. Lock that up. Very important that's locked up for the next step. The last one is this one on the bottom. It's one of those ones that you don't really have to fine tune very much once you have it on a camera. You know, like a little bit of the screen movement isn't gonna change it, but it's the pan um, front to bottom, front to back, <laughs> the pan front to back. Like I said, I'm going by what uh, the screen's gonna tell us here in a minute. So unlock that, so it's nice and fluid. Hold it on its side. You're gonna release with this lever here and what, what, you can, what you're doing here is basically if you hold the camera, you can move the handle or you can hold the handle and like kind of try to move the camera. I just think it's easier to move the handle. And you're gonna get it to where, to where it's, the lens is pointing forward. So when you're holding it on the side, the lens is pointing forward. So it's pretty much all the way back. Lock that guy back up. Okay, now the ultimate test, it's almost like you're being graded on your skills, and I love that this gimbal has this. But we're gonna unlock everything. Gimbals don't like to be turned on until everything is unlocked, balanced, fluid, and perfect. And what's nice about this gimbal is it's so small and lightweight, but the downside of that is like it's not super strong and powerful. There's not as much room for mistakes as if you're putting a smaller camera on a bigger gimbal. It's like you're going to have to get it right so you're not putting too much strain on the motors because the motors aren't as strong as bigger gimbals. But that's what makes the gimbal small. So everything's unlocked and fluid, and we're going to turn it on by holding the button in. Now let's get close on this screen. If we tap balance, nice, that's like an A plus. So you can see that, you know, it, it shows you each one that I went through, tilt front to back, tilt up down, roll left right, and pan front back. So that's how you want it to look. But if, for example, I had more pressure on the front, it's giving me that yellow indicator toward the front. Now I think the blue is just like, it's gently wrong, the yellow is bad, the red is really bad, so I feel weird even pushing on it like that. Um, same as side to side, so if I were to push it this way, it's showing me that on the left right, it's too far to the right. So isn't that nice? So if you do balance it and you're seeing any of this activity, then you'll know that what you need to do is turn it off go back in and make those minor adjustments to get everything just like super perfect. Okay, so everything is balanced well. You can see how fluid everything is. The gimbal's not vibrating at all. It's not mad at me. It's not upset about the balance by any means. If I wanna go into true vlogging mode, just triple tap that front button, it flips around. Generally, you can flip the screen around. Actually, I should have started it with it facing me, I guess. It doesn't really matter as far as the balance, though. And everything's looking good. Now, what I've always said from the start, when you're using um, a camera and a lens that's kind of pushing it on these smaller gimbals, is that it's best to just keep it as a vlogging thing. So you don't want to be doing, like, your crazy, you know, trying to do barrel rolls and stuff. You can definitely, like, get your B-roll, 
but I would avoid, you know, even trying to go past that, that spot. Or you can just like deliberately get it there, but don't expect that motion to be fluid. It's really going to work best, just standard vlogging shot. And I'll show you the vlogging shot in a minute, but you're probably wondering, you know, vlogging is more about just a shot and a lens. Conveniently, we have a fill-in light on this gimbal, which is never before seen on any gimbal. Having a built-in fill light is the most brilliant thing I think anyone could have ever thought of. Thank you, Jiyun, for that. Um, it's just so nice to have that extra little pop of light on your face when you're in even just like a slight shade or even in bright sunlight. If, I don't think that's really going to cut through the shadow of sunlight, but it's always just going to make your skin look better. The fill light and then the other thing obviously that you need for vlogging is a mic. So what I always highly recommend is the Rode Wireless Go. I'm going to turn this off. And the reason for vlogging is because, you know, similar to the gimbal, keeping in the same theme, super small, super lightweight, super discreet. You can use this one quarter inch expansion port for anything. You can mount a mic, you can mount an external monitor, um, you know, different variations of things. But I think the most important thing to have is a mic that's attached to you because then you can get further away if you want. Um, you can mount a shotgun mic, that would be fine too. And I did have a lot of issues finding just the perfect extension arm. If you watch all my previous videos, I'm using just random kind of hodgepodge um, things just kind of put together. And a lot of the gimbal expansion arms that you'll find on Amazon are kind of made for the bigger gimbals, the DJI Ronin gimbals and stuff. So they're pretty long and they're just kind of bulky and I just don't think they're minimal and streamlined enough. So I've just been ordering them left and right on Amazon and sending back anything I don't like. And I finally found literally and aesthetically the perfect one. This brand, Seymour, never heard of it. Seymour, <laughs> I don't know if they made this for this but it is just perfect because, you know, it's the black and red and it's tiny, it's petite, it's lightweight. I haven't really explored everything you can do with this, but basically all I wanted was one quarter inch screw in and then a cold shoe mount so I can mount the Rode Wireless Go. So we're going to screw in Seymour here into the one quarter inch expansion port. And this thing flips around in a million different directions. There's probably a lot more I could do with this, but I just recently got it. So I was excited just to be able to have a nice, safe place for the Rode Wireless Go um, to mount. And the mic input on the Canon M50 is right here in front of the screen, which can be problematic. It, it limits you being able to flip the screen around. So if you are going to be vlogging, you want to go ahead and flip the screen around before you plug in the mic. It's a little bit limiting because you can't switch back and forth without unplugging the mic, but there's always a million challenges with this stuff. And when you do have that connected, you're naturally going to have um, a little bit of a misbalance, so you kind of need to rebalance a little bit. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the Rode Wireless Go, this is the transmitter, so this will clip to your shirt. I've got one on right now recording over here. Um, you can put it in like a, what looks like a stick mic um, configuration. I'll put a clip of that. And that's really convenient for just like kind of putting, getting your sounds from anywhere. Mommy, I love you. I love you. You can use the Rode Wireless Go 2, which has two separate transmitters and put one on a friend. So you're both recording audio into the camera. It's just a lot more versatile than just having a shotgun mic on the camera where you need to be near the camera for it to be picking up your audio. With this, you can move super far back, just lots of, lots of different things. And it's always capturing your voice and somebody else's voice rather than just whatever's right in front of the camera. So for my, for my test vlogging shot, I'm gonna have to wear this mic too. And just a quick little rebalance. It's pretty much just gonna affect the left to right because it's kind of just pulling on it a little. So I'll make a slight adjustment with that. And you just wanna kind of put this wherever it's giving you the least amount of tension. Now the Canon M50 in particular cannot communicate directly with this gimbal. I think some of the Sony cameras can and higher end cameras can, which doesn't make sense because you can't really put bigger cameras on here. They say you can, they say you can put a full frame on this thing, but I don't know what kind of lens you're gonna have on that. Um, 
but I don't really need, I don't really feel the need to control the camera with the gimbal. For the most part, I know my camera buttons well. I, you know, I'm going to control everything just naturally with the camera as I normally do. And another thing is I did mention using that triple tap to vlog. When you have this set up with the mic, your vlogging shot, you're just going to go like this and turn it around. <laughs> That was bad. It was bad because the camera, the gimbal wasn't turned on. Let me turn the gimbal on. So then to vlog, you just turn the camera around. And I would be recording audio. I'm gonna turn on my beautiful little fill light here. It's just a good thing to have on all the time. I'm sure it drains the battery a little bit, but it's such a big battery. That's a good thing about gimbals. The batteries are in the handle, so they're able to put like a big battery in there. And uh, they usually last a pretty long time. So that is what the vlogging setup looks like. Everything is movable, everything is fluid, everything is balanced and happy. Again, like I said, you can't do a lot of the crazy motions, but that's really not what we're going for. And I'm just gonna go take a walk around the yard and show you what this vlogging shot looks like. Here's your vlogging shot with the Canon N50, the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.8 EFM lens, and the Cranum 3 gimbal. It's a good setup. It's an easy setup. It's a lightweight setup, easy to travel with, that is. Once you get the hang of balancing it, it's not too tricky. Um, definitely nice and smooth. Ella, come here. And hopefully the Rode Wireless Go is picking up excellent audio. When I vlog, I like to tilt the camera down ever so slightly and kind of hold it a little bit higher up. I think it's a more flattering angle. And I definitely like to vary my distance between this and this. The Sigma 16 millimeter is nice because it's nice and wide, but sometimes I think it's a little too wide because you do get a little bit more of that face, face distortion. Kind of makes your face slimmer, but not necessarily in a flattering way. So you don't ever want to be like up like this with a lens like this. But the good thing about it is that you can get lots of background stuff. And when you have a gimbal, it's just going to be so, so smooth. Now, one thing I regret to report with this setup is that because this lens is a little bit longer than what's comfortable on this, um, on the Crane M3 in the balancing situation, I've had a hard time using an ND filter on it. And ND filters are kind of super important for video if you want to stay with that large aperture and correct shutter speed. I have whole videos explaining the ND filter situation, but, um, so far, using an ND filter on the front of this lens and balancing it properly has been a challenge. So I'm working on figuring out maybe a counterweight situation or, I don't know, we were just talking about a few different ideas. Caden and I, my videographer, not Ella and I. Come here. Hey. My, Hi. Little, my little friend joined me. This is Ella. Hi. How old are you, Ella? Four. You haven't been on the channel in a while. Have you? <laughs> Um, and I'm Alicia, by the way, in case you are, there's your kitty, in case you are just discovering this channel because you've Googled how the heck to balance the Canon M50 with the Sigma 16 millimeter. On the Crane M3, I specialize in talking about crop sensor mirrorless cameras for vlogging, for video in particular, and just using lightweight minimal setups because my YouTube background is in travel vlogging and I always wanted the lightest cameras and I think there's so much value in having a lightweight setup and sometimes it's harder to make things work with smaller cameras, but it's um, definitely worth it when you are holding your arm out and you're holding everything up. It's nice to have something that's nice and small. So this Crane M3 has just been such a game changer. The Sigma 60 millimeter is amazing as well. And the Canon M50 is a wonderful vlogging camera. There's lots of great vlogging cameras out nowadays. So we'll be talking about a few different ones on the channel moving forward. But, you know, this is an option for sure. All right, guys. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you are now able to balance your Sigma 16 millimeter on your Canon M50 on the Crane M3 gimbal with a Rode mic. And I will definitely link to all of this amazing gear below, as well as that little expansion arm that I found on Amazon. Cause I know a lot of you have the main gear, but you're not gonna have that one yet. Um, and it's super cheap, just a great addition, very versatile for anything that you're putting together as far as vlogging setups. And stay tuned to the channel for some talk coming up about 
other vlogging cameras because there are so many great vlogging cameras out there now. Um, if you have a different camera and you're curious about balancing it on the Crane M3, let me know. I might do some more balancing videos with different cameras and just show you how different things work on this gimbal. Um, this is an amazing gimbal. It's so by far the best lightweight gimbal to handle a crop sensor mirrorless camera. And if it can handle the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, it can definitely handle the um, other Sigma F1.4 lenses in the trio, the 30 millimeter, the 56 millimeter. Um, so this has been the most challenging lens so far, but once it's balanced properly, I think it works out pretty well. So thanks for joining me today. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the very next video. Bye.